Good morning. Um, I will present um, a specific part of the framework that we developed for process mining uh, concerning the language, which is a logic language, and in particular, how we uh, integrated uh, a way to represent and uh, exploit uh, rules as a further support to process uh, enactment, supervision, and uh, uh, other tasks involved in the <coughs> process management. Uh, after introducing <coughs> our program motivation, uh, I will quickly present the woman framework. Thank you. <laughs> uh, our framework with specific reference to the formalism used for representing processes and rules in this formalism. Uh, I will show this mainly by an example and then I will draw some code of line to the work issues. So, uh, today we are involved with many complex processes uh, which require automatic techniques to be handled. Uh, but uh, these techniques and the underlying um, formalisms for representing process models must be complex uh, for supporting these complex processes as well. Um, as regards process models, most research focused in, up to date on the flow of activities. Uh, little attention <coughs> was paid to conditions which are very important to uh, enforce some desirable properties during process mining and supervision. And uh, we want to uh, somehow fill this gap. Um, so we want to go beyond the current state of the art, which is mainly uh, made up of the use of decision trees, um, propositional decision trees, uh, which gives no specific contribution uh, to the model representations because it's just another formalism used in process models and also no strict integration. And also, uh, this is unable to deal with some uh, aspects which are very important in real world uh, contexts, such as the possibility of handling relationships and also uh, the possibility of placing conditions not just on the execution of tasks but also on other elements of the process. Uh, so uh, we uh, developed a framework which uh, and defined in it a new formalism that tries to overcome, to overcome these shortcomings. Um, and in addition is also able to handle agents to take into account the history of process enactments, the enactment, and also to consider different kinds of interaction between uh, among the involved entities. <coughs> so UMA is a framework for workflow management, and there is also a system implemented that um, um, embeds this uh, framework. It can mine, so learn process models, it can be useful to supervise process models, to predict uh, future actions uh, during a process enactment, and also to simulate processes, and thus all of this incrementally, which is very important because we don't need a closed set in advance of cases of the process to learn a process model, but we can learn and refine it as long as new cases become available. It's based on first order on close logic, and um, ensures uh, a redundancy, uh, strict uh, adherence to the experience, and also noise handling. Uh, okay, quickly, uh, I will show the input. Uh, the input to our uh, system is uh, a list of entries uh, describing process-related events, which can be the uh, beginning or the end of the process, the beginning or the end of an activity in a process execution, and in our extended framework also uh, a description of the context which, uh, in which actions take place. Um, as regards 
the model, the basic model we propose um, is based on basically two um, predicates. A predicate describing the tasks that may be involved in the process, and the most important predicate is a predicate which can be seen as a rule that says that if some activities in this set have been uh, accomplished, then um, they enable the execution of other activities which are in this other set. Actually, they are multi-sets because uh, an activity can be uh, executed in many instances during a process. Uh, this is already more powerful uh, as regards process mining uh, than standard formalism such as Petri nets because there are complex cases in which Petri net requires duplicate or uh, hidden tasks which we avoid with this formalism. We can model agents, so for each task and for each transition we may define uh, the roles of the agents that must uh, be fulfilled to execute those um, actions. And uh, in particular, we can uh, express rules uh, both for determining preconditions that determine whether a task or transition can be applied, but also post conditions that allow us to uh, figure out what will happen after uh, a task execution. So uh, these rules may refer to tasks, to transitions, but also to tasks in the specific context of a transition. For instance, I may say that I play soccer when the weather is good, but in particular, when I play soccer in a transition which is in the evening, I also want uh, additional preconditions. For instance, in the afternoon, I must not uh, have played tennis. And the body uh, represents the uh, actual conditions for these rules. Uh, okay, this is the description language. So in our rules, we may describe the um, activities that take place along with the moment of the process in which they uh, take place and the agent that executes those activities. We may identify the start and the stop of the process. Uh, we have also other supporting um, predicates. We may say that a given activity step is executed in a given context. And we may say that activity steps or context step, steps follow each other within a given range of steps or of time points, let's say seconds, minutes, and so on. And we can also uh, use suitable domain dependent predicates to express the context. Uh, so I will show it with, a, with an example. Suppose this is uh, not actually a, um, an industrial process, but we can see as a process also the typical behavior of people during the various days of the week. For instance, on Wednesday, I can guess, I can imagine that uh, a given person uh, plays football or relaxes, then eats, then uh, concurrently uh, cleans, uh, listens at the radio and cooks, then eats again and watches TV again concurrently, then plays video games. During this activity, uh, this person may have phone calls, one or more phone calls, then he can directly go to bed or before going to bed, play football or play cards. This could be um, complex <coughs> to represent with, uh, and to learn with standard process mining uh, um, systems. And this is our uh, model representing this flow of activities. Let's see how we uh, construct the, uh, the examples for the rules with a sample case. Uh, for instance, in this case, from this time to this time, uh, this person plays football, then uh, he eats, uh, 
Uh, then concurrently, first uh, starts listening the radio. During this activity, also he cooks, and after a while he cleans, and so on. And we can uh, show that there are contexts in which this, uh, for the sake of simplicity, we show just the two contexts uh, in which these activities take place. So we want to describe in our rules both the uh, relationships between these activities. So this is the next, this one. These three are next, these. These two are next, these, both, and so on. These and these happen in this context, and all of these happen in this other context. So this is the uh, internal description of this case. And let's show how the description is built. When the process starts, uh, the description is empty. When the process begins, we generate a, a step representing the start of the process and say that at this step, the start of the process happens. Oops. Okay, then uh, we have the, this, this description of the context, which says that during this moment, timestamp, the weather is good, and the status of uh, the heater, 812, is off, just for <laughs> giving an idea. So, uh, this is translated into our description with, uh, by adding to the previous description these atoms, uh, where timestamp is uh, replaced by a new identifier for this context, let's say C1. Then uh, activity football begins, so a new step S1 is generated and associated to this action, and the uh, description is extended by saying that after the step of the start of the process, there is step S1 that takes place in context C1 in which uh, we said that the weather is good and so on. And step S1 refers to activity football carried out by Steve. Uh, specifically, we see that uh, football comes after uh, start, uh, after four minutes. Okay, since here we have uh, an activity, we also generate examples to learn preconditions for this activity. So, all this description is the description that we associate to uh, an example for learning that activity football can be run. That activity football can be run in transition P1, and also that transition P1 can be run because this is the first activity in transition P1. When the activity ends, uh, we actually don't extend the description. Then another activity starts, which is it. It takes step S2, which comes after S1, and is still in context C1, which we described before. S2 is associated to action it carried out by Steve and comes 161 minutes after activity S1, which was football. Again, this uh, causes the generation of three examples for preconditions and so on. Here another context is described, so we generate the context step C2 they say that this context comes after C1, after 197 minutes, and so on. From now on, all future activities will be associated to context C2. Radio, uh, cook, and so on. Always generating examples. Uh, until the end of the process, Comes. Then, at the end of the process, we generate, now that we know everything that happens both before and after our activities, we can generate examples for post-conditions for all 
the tasks and transitions that we have seen before. So in this sample case, using several cases of this kind, we, uh, for instance, learned that uh, at a moment in time x, the person plays football only if before that time there was the starting of the uh, process uh, between 1 and 10 steps before and between 3 and 437 minutes before that action football uh, takes place in context C when the weather is good and a ball is available and its status is inflated. Of course, this is an example uh, just to show the, the formalism and what can be good. The post condition for football says that, of course, uh, X, uh, uh, at moment X, football must fulfill its precondition and in addition, after um, in a future context, D with respect to the one in which football is played within some ranges of steps and minutes, uh, the cloth hamper H must be in the status not empty. These are examples, I won't read them, but just to show for pre and post conditions for transitions. So if I have if the transition is uh, okay, is I implies O, if all actions in I have been executed, I may start to execute uh, actions in O only if this precondition is fulfilled, and also uh, tasks in, tran in transition. For instance, to play football in the specific case of transition P12, uh, the, in addition to the usual precondition, uh, the agent that plays football must have relaxed previously. So, uh, we actually uh, built a system that embeds all these frameworks and uh, this system uh, <coughs> was used for several tasks in process management which is mining so the system learns both the activity model and the pre and post conditions for supervision uh, for prediction because differently from petri nets since our models are split in several transitions we uh, don't know actually in a given moment which transition, there may be several candidate transitions that would be run. So uh, in our case, it takes, uh, it is particularly important to predict which ones uh, will be executed and conditions help us in doing this and also simulation. We applied our system uh, not only in complex artificial problems and found it is more efficient and more uh, accurate uh, than uh, current state of the art. And also to real world tasks such as learning people's daily routines, uh, also people's moving habits. In this case, we had an ambient assisted living task and wanted to learn which were the typical movements of the person within his home. And also, strange application, but a very complex one. Uh, we tried to see chess playing as a process execution and found that the system um, can, after learning from just 400 games, is able to uh, predict which will be the next uh, action, which is peace movements uh, moves that will be performed um, up to two-thirds of, of new games. Of course, the final of games is always different, but uh, with just 400 examples, it can uh, predict with sufficient accuracy, let's say 80%, which will be the next move in new games. So, uh, we think this formalism is uh, really useful and we want to go on uh, working on this topic. Uh, 
um, we want to try further uh, application domains to see how uh, inter interesting rules can be learned. And uh, we also would like to work on uh, approaches for handling this more powerful uh, formalism, for instance, for handling temporal information, we guarantee it's just uh, in time intervals, and also to take into account the whole sequence of contexts uh, when an activity is performed, and not just the context in which that activity is performed. And of course, also we want to experiment in different functionalities of the system. Thank you. someone specifically says that some case, old cases are not valid anymore, we would just say that cases older than, but we could, of course. Um, you have already separated time and the rest of the context. Could you split the context again into some spatial part and all of the rest by the social context as well? So you could have geo coordinates for the spatial part, for instance, to avoid the two football matches to be at the same time and it's the same topography. Uh, yeah, um, we didn't do this, but actually, um, The way in which we handle uh, the after uh, relationship is completely general. Here we have used the justice for the steps of the actions and the context. But we uh, may use several other after um, relationships changing the dimension. So we could say uh, geographical context, social context, and have several separate, but uh, they can be related to each other because we can use other predicates to say that uh, a given step in a given dimension is related to it. So, uh, this uh, express press only allows sequential uh, representation, but uh, does it also allow an appeal of concurrence? Yes, because uh, for instance, here we learn that this is uh, after this, and also this is after this. So the, the afters, uh, after predicates, after steps are not just uh, bound to be in a linear sequence. I may have x after x y and after x z and they are concurrent without any implication about which is before or after the other. The precondition may specify that uh, uh, these two that are concurrent are bound uh, to fulfill that it starts after tb because tb is in the precondition of it. But after the formalism, uh, a loss of concurrence is made. Have you uh, addressed uh, 
invalidation scenarios. So for example, if while video game is underway, the TV fails, which is a very, you know, Business processes, yes, the uh, invalidation of a prior step. I see. Frequently occurs. I see. N no, we didn't. Uh, I have to think about yeah. it in the sense that maybe the system might just uh, already be maybe ready to, it, read yeah. to um, learn these mm -hmm. kinds of things. I can't answer you right okay. now. Yeah, can you elaborate how the, the learning piece uh, influences the, the predictability? How you said, you know, because I can predict it. Where is that formally? Yeah, maybe it's a little bit too long to... I, I will try to say it, but in case we can talk later. Mm. Uh, so, for instance... Let's try... Okay. Uh, let's uh, suppose we are here. Mm -hmm. uh, there are three possible uh, I call transition uh, this kind of thing, this kind of thing different from Bethnet transition of course. Okay. So I have three transitions enabled. Since video game has finished, I might start transition video game football or video game bed or video game play cards. Um, this is one piece. In a more complex process, um, it's not so clear that I'm here and that I can either go there or there or there. Uh, depending on the history of transitions, I might have several uh, configurations of activities uh, all compliant to some <coughs> to some process enactment but different. So while in Petri Nets you always know where you are and so you know which are the next possible activities. Uh, in this case, depending on how you combine the activities you have seen, you, you might be in different places of, of the process. And uh, this makes prediction harder because uh, we, we handle this by considering the number of cases in which each possibility uh, was seen, the number of warnings, because when we supervise a process, we can output warnings uh, about small incompliances. So using the number of warnings uh, in each alternative, the number of cases supporting each alternative, which is what we do in the chess uh, domain. I'm sorry, I understand. Thank you very much.